question. Why don't you use breadboards? Um, so SMD and a breadboard don't go together <laughs> so well. If you had a socket or something, in right? The so wind, so a breakout so, board. Yeah. yeah. So breakout board, right? So you can you can get um, uh, you can you can certainly get some of these uh, breakout boards for almost any um, uh, any size thing, and I think that would be um, I think that would be a fine uh, uh, a fine way to start. Um, you know that would allow you that debugging where uh, where it's easy to unplug and and and, and diagnose separate separate pieces. Um, yeah. You might also be able to, to have some physical jumpers that would allow you to isolate pieces of the board from each other. I don't know. I, I like I said, I don't have experience in, in doing that, but uh, but certainly prototyping on some of that might be good. Then one of the problems is that if you have a, uh, an integrated uh, a better controller, let's say, like that, then it's feasible. But if you have to do a memory bus, it gets ugly. Fast, fast. Right. Yeah. because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have yeah, additional counts. distance. Well, and and again, um, uh, an EPRO programmer hardly fits on one breadboard. Right. Easily on two. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so my, uh, so a couple of questions I had uh, was one. Um, uh, getting a reality check on the BGA thing. And what I'm hearing is uh, that, although it might be great fun for me to explore that as, as something that, that, that your experiences also are, that BGA success rate is, uh, is not, so, uh, not so great. So probably steering towards pins that you actually solder is the way to go. Uh, and then two, the bigger question is, um, uh, is that something that that any of you have, uh, that that would be something that if there were a kit available, would that be something that you would buy? Would that be something that you would that 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 you would waste your weekends uh, shaking your fist at, trying to figure out why it didn't work? If it runs syllable, <laughs> don't run the right Where's the arm part? We need the arm part. <laughs> and the interesting thing, by the way, is that. I was uh, looking on Wikipedia, and a lot of open processors are ARM and RISC processors, yeah. and, and not Intel or whatever. I yeah. mean, they, 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 they all try to simulate ARM and RISC. Yeah. But they, they, is there a reason for it? Or Well, there, there are a couple of reasons against x64. Basically, one of the, the big reasons is that it is an ugly hack from the start. Mm -hmm. And it only got worse after that. ARM is, is pretty nice and clean design. Uh, I have some doubts about the newest version and the, the Cortex M series because they they say they run ARM code, they don't. They run some modified thumb code, and I have already had some nasty unsupported destruction problems. But well. Uh, and uh, if I remember correctly, the ARM core is, print, is, is relatively easy to make in hardware and the license uh, is not that high. Well, but, but he's talking about the re-implementations that aren't using, you're talking about the, the completely open ones, right? The, the stuff that's on like... Yeah, or board. I, I mean, it, it just um, feel my op. Um, uh, uh, you know, it, yeah, it, it just recurred me that uh, that they were often trying to reproduce ARM processors. So I, yeah, my my best guess on that, and I, I really I really can't say, but uh, but um, the total number of instructions that you have to figure out how to implement mm -hmm. in a reduced instruction set mm -hmm. is almost certainly going to be a lot less than in a complex instruction set. Mm -hmm. ARM has a way lower transistor count. Since, right. since, since it was invented halfway the 80s, the transistor count of ARMs have hardly gone up. So the, that's remarkable. So to say it like this, the, the, the practical burden is a lot lower. That's my, that, that's my yeah. best guess. And there's less, like less power consumption and 
Mm -hmm. A lot of the uh, small devices, they have like a system on chips, so it's easy to uh, combine the arm core with uh, the other stuff you, you want to have in the chip. So. Mm -hmm. You can even run an ARM simulator on EVR CPU. And then you can put full fledged Linux on it. And an EVR CPU? Uh, EVR, that's the. Uh, oh, uh, Atmel. Uh, yeah. yeah. So okay, you, yeah. you can run Linux on your Arduino. Yeah. Very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's, it's yeah. possible. Yeah. Okay. And another reason is that. For ARM, you have a lot of uh, tools that are available, like a compiler, linker, uh, debugger. It's it's all there. And it's all pretty good supported. Some ARM tool chain. Yeah. yeah. On GitHub. Mm -hmm. yeah the, the, I mean, depending on how serious you are with the project, I would say that it would be very uh, important to look at you know, who could be the stakeholders in this because I can imagine that a lot of companies would really be interested in being the provider of the small parts in the future. Well, possibly. So, I think yeah. the, uh, the I, I'm not sure it's a project that requires a lot of, uh, of, of commercial backing. I think that mm -hmm. most of the mm -hmm. uh, most of the investment is about uh, about us mm -hmm. learning the the, the skills and um, and and getting a, a better understanding of uh, like what is the Olamex board today doing, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, figuring out what changes make sense to make um, a kit version of that. So I think that it's it's mostly um, uh, time and. Uh, and tears, mm -hmm. uh, and lots of frustration and crying. Um, that uh, that it means not so much uh, a lot of euros. I think that um, uh, that certainly bigger stacks of euros always help. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but I don't I don't feel like that's the I don't I don't feel like that's that's the big the big stopping um, point uh, in terms of like how serious am I about the project? Well. Uh, I have limited amount of weekends and mm -hmm. uh, and evenings, so uh, at this point, um, I'm I'm still putting more energy into this, mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, putting a little bit of time into uh, trying to learn more about what one needs to learn because I'm, I I feel like like all of the knowledge is maybe if it's not immediately within my grasp, it isn't that far of a reach. For me to get there, uh, and and so I'm slowly reading and trying to learn whatever um, uh, I can about how to design or at least assemble the computer. So I'm. I mean, there's. It, it feels like an infinite amount of stuff that needs to be learned, but but I also know that you don't have to have deep understanding of all of it. But uh, j just to give a very practical example. Uh, I know in Amsterdam you have uh, make electronic thingies in Amsterdam. Do you know them? I don't know them. Uh, they are also some kind of uh, a hacker space. They don't call themselves like that, but they are for years coming together on I, evenings. And I think they some are, of the uh, tech guys were talking about. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's not them. But, yeah. I, I, but, but in conversation, I think they. I, I well, yeah, I, I, I guess they know each other. Yeah. But I know th this is quite a big group. And they uh, come together to uh, start soldering and such. Okay. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, it's it's not, as far as I can understand from what I know of it, it's it's it, it's not the ultra nerd. I mean, it's a, a very colorful group of people. And did they did they used to meet in a uh, in a um, in a squad? It, it could be. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, but anyway, it's not, it's, it's not super important. But, but, but what you're telling me is that there's more resources even in Amsterdam yeah, that I could, yeah. I could uh, 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 reach out to. Uh, 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 as far as I know, they're active in the FAPLOP community, to say it like that, in Amsterdam. Okay. All right. and, and also in Amsterdam, there, uh, I was uh, with the first FAPLOP, uh, the, the, the first FAPLOP 3D printer in Amsterdam, in Pakhuis de Zwijger. And they have a a fab lab there, so 
uh, I mean, that's pr very practical. Uh, they could be very interested in organizing a soldering uh, at, the, at evening meeting for Amsterdam kids, uh, for example. Yeah. I think there's, I think that they, and I'm going to say this wrong, the Veghals, I think uh, they, uh, there's a, there's a Fed lab in the old city gates. Um, in yeah, 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 the Bath Society, you mean. Is, is that, is that what it is? The, um, but I think, I, I've heard that there's something there. Um, so, but that's not connected. Anyway, so, what, so clearly there's 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 a lot of resources. There's yeah. a lot of people that we can connect together. That's why these hackerspaces are springing up everywhere. There's yeah. a lot of interest. Um, it's a matter of of um, uh, of getting ourselves connected. And uh, have I put enough energy into that? Probably not. Um, but uh, but like I say, I'm I, uh, I'm hoping to get to get this project to to a nice place um, so that. Uh, uh, so that I can um, uh, start to take on, on the next one. Uh, and I would love for the Solder Home Computer Kit to be, to be the, next, uh, the next project that I, that I dive into. I, and I just, uh, I'm still exploring whether or not it's realistic, but my sense is that it is. I well, feel like I mean, it is. They, they are, for years, they are uh, crying uh, about the fact that the there is need for more IT people, and, and uh, in this way uh, also electronic. Uh, but they they have problems attracting students. So I mean, there would be I guess there would be many interested organizations to hop on on mm -hmm. such an initi initiative, because it could be interesting for organizations to, to try to attract more interested students in the subject. Sure. So, but I mean, the, these are the all general advices, but... Yeah. but um, it sounds like making a toy thing in Amsterdam is not, that doesn't have a fixed place. Okay, okay. I, I don't see a where anywhere on the week on their page. And the next meeting seems to be in an unrelated building. So it might be a traveling group at this point. I think I think they I think this might be the same group that used to that used to meet in the squad, but now yeah. they now they don't. I'm so not sure. Now they are hovering around, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Swallowed the red pill and are on the run. <laughs> Maybe, uh, about, maybe about solving PTAs uh, at home. Mm -hmm. um, I was debugging a chip, and it was only available in PTA. Yeah. I put it down upside down, so with the pins uh, the away from down. the board. Yeah. And then I glued uh, flat cables around it, and just soldered wire bridges to it. Ah. <laughs> if you do that a little bit better, yeah, yeah, okay, and you. Uh, make landing pads around it. You can. Uh, you basically made your own breakout board. Yes. Okay. Um, you make. We could basically do uh, like bond wires that are in the chip, but on well bigger wires and just solar. Yeah. And if the on a lot of BTA chips, even the quite dense ones, the pins are not that. They yeah. have they have a lot of way between pins, mm -hmm. like a millimeter or so, mm -hmm. or even more, and that's easily to solder, and maybe even easier than quad fat pack, huh, because that's, that's sometimes that's like half millimeter pin spacing. Yeah, I mean that's, that's tiny, yeah. tiny. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's really small. So, um, but it is a lot, uh, uh, it's a lot more work. That's right. right. And I think I think that uh, that what that sounds to me the most like is if there's uh, if there's a time when we can't get one of the chips that we want in QFP that there's an escape hatch yeah. with with BGA that, that we could uh, that we could take. But I think that um, uh, that I would rather step aside from that if possible and uh, and and go straight with pins that. Uh, that, that are more straightforward, I suppose. But, uh, but you know, I, I could be convinced otherwise. The biggest problem I had with soldering that down was that 
I have to do all weird things because the, the pin spacing. Yeah. yeah. It was hard for me to get um, in breakout area the same amount of pins that were on the chip. Sure. If I had uh, a symmetric landing pattern out the chip, it would be much easier. Mm -hmm. Another problem was how to insulate multiple layers of wire. But that's easy to fix when there, if you have like the, the shorter wires at, at the edge, if you have done them, you stay over it with capital tape and you do the next round. That's easy to do. Sure. So I think it's quite feasible to do it in that way. It's it's a it's a it's a great clever hack. I, yeah. I, I'm impressed. I, I would not have thought to flip it upside down. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe you should uh, you should change the goal to uh, solder your own uh, smart card. So, <laughs> then uh, I know someone. Uh, <laughs> well, I, at least well you can get quite thin PCB material. And a lot of smart card readers mm -hmm. don't care that the card is sticking out of them. Okay. Just, just stick in a PCB and you can even sell tip packages on the rest of the PCB. They are just a far distance away from the contacts. <laughs> so, anything else? Thank you guys for letting me speak. Well, yeah.